Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. All right, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good. So we got to talk about this Malik Mind Games Yoda, okay? That's what I'm calling his ass now, a.k.a. Mr. Agent of Chaos. He is going viral once again for showing out and not really living in his truth, okay? So what's going down is this. He recently sat down with The Root. He was being interviewed by a man named Terrell Jermaine Starr. And kudos to Terrell for really holding his composure and not allowing Malik Yoba to dictate, you know what I'm saying, to dictate the interview. And he basically kept his foot on Malik Yoba's neck and he asked the questions that we wanted to hear. Unlike The Breakfast Club, who completely dropped the ball and allowed Malik Yoba and all his friends to run the conversation. That's not how an interview works. So kudos to you, sir okay, for taking your job and your integrity seriously. So when you first watch the interview, what I find really funny is Malik is now trying to switch up the narrative of Maurice Willoughby. And I find that funny because, again, before my video, that's not at like over 200,000 views, why I broke down who the real Maurice Willoughby was, Malik was toting that whole scenario of him committing suicide and attaching it to the fact that he was dating a trans woman and he was getting clowned and bullied. And then if you watch my video where I talk about him on The Breakfast Club, I broke it down. That one, that video was old. Um, they were not just making fun of him for dating a trans woman. Um, Maurice was also having a lot of issues with his sexuality. His own trans girlfriend called him gay and considered him gay. And on top of that, Maurice Willoughby was very abusive, okay? So in this clip, you'll hear Malik Yoba now mentioning, you know, the abuse that Maurice Willoughby was inflicting on his girlfriend. Go ahead and check this out. I saw a video of a young man, which many people saw, Maurice Willoughby. Um, and I knew the backstory that he was a young man who was dating a transgender woman. I knew that he had some drug abuse issues. I knew he had some abuse issues with the girlfriend. Um, but in the video, you see him be bullied, and it had circulated, and people thought that this kid, you know, committed suicide because he was being bullied, um, directly related to his his um, dating a trans woman. So that was part of the story. Um, the other part of the story for me was when I saw that kid in in the video, I thought of myself. All right, so you guys just saw that clip, so I found that very funny that he's now including that in this whole Maurice Willoughby narrative, okay? So he goes on to just really just talk and run his mouth and talk and talk. And so then the interviewer ends up asking him, you know, flat out about the allegations concerning Mariah Lopez. And you can tell immediately he's triggered. He's upset. He really doesn't want to go there. But he tries to answer it the best way he can by just basically talking about a whole bunch of other things and not just answering the question flat out. Go ahead and check this out. So since creating these posts, you received a mixture of support and criticism. Mm -hmm. uh, more, on a more serious note, uh, a trans woman by the name of Mariah Lopez Ebony wrote a Facebook post in which she accused you of soliciting sex from her as a minor at ages 13 and 16 um, years old. So what do you say to that allegation? I say that, um, you know, when I heard that, and I didn't actually read it until last Thursday, um, what she actually said. I don't know the woman, number one. But so you're I, saying you never met her, you don't know her? That's exactly what I'm saying. I don't know her. I have no idea who she is. But I'm familiar with that pain. I'm familiar with that trauma. I'm familiar with people who are crying out for help. I'm familiar with the lack of regard for this population, which is, again, my point. And so when I heard it, um, for me, to hear something so heinous, right, um, number one, and then to see someone post something with no proof of anything, and then to see the world embrace, or a portion of the world embrace it and pass that around, that toxicity speaks to exactly why I do the work that I do, right? And so. It's an oxymoron almost. It's like, wow, the first cisgender man who stands up with a community then gets attacked by that community. But that's true for anybody who's ever stood up for oppressed people. It's happened to Gandhi. It, and, you know, it's happened to Mandela. It's happened to Marcus Garvey. It's happened to any, Malcolm X. It's happened to anyone who would say, I'm going to stand up for these oppressed people. Think about who we are, 
right? There was a time we couldn't drink from water fountain. We couldn't sit in the bus. Think about how ridiculous that is. And so for me, having a, a, a view of a community that I grew up with and see the suffering, the very thing that motivates me to help people out of is something that someone tried to accuse me of. I wanted to ask I you. I want to finish the point. So the point is mm -hmm. to be on the other side of that tells me that the work has to continue and the blessing will be greater because the truth will always outweigh a lie, right? And so the truth is people are suffering. The truth is that there are kids in the street, right? But the other truth is that for my entire life, you know, I'm someone who has been working with young people um, since I was 16 years old, making sure that there are better pathways for other people. And so um, that's a very loaded question for you to ask me that. And we, we discussed that before. And I actually told you that yeah. I would ask you yeah. that question. Yeah. And so I asked that question. Yeah. And, so and it's not a loaded question. I told you no, I was going to tell you up front it is. that I did tell you about it. Yeah. And we both agreed to it. Yeah. I told you that. But, it's still, but see, even we sat for four hours the other day, right, and discussed mm -hmm. this. And so even when you asked me in real time to even the suggestion of it, right? Because there's so many implications in that, right? There's legal, and I had another follow-up point yeah. to that since you, um, since you added on. What, do you, what would you say to people who feel that even in this allegation, you are centering yourself um, in regards to being someone who stands up for a community? Uh, I think that's the way that a lot of people would perceive that, bringing up the famous people um, who have done great things in civil rights and you censoring yourself um, in the middle of an allegation. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. You know, and I wanna say this, I just I see through Malik Yoba, Yoda's bullshit, okay? I see through Malik Yoba's mind games, mental gymnastic bullshit. That's why I call Malik Yoda, okay? He's trying to play mental gymnastics and he's thinking he can intimidate the interviewer by over talking him. And the nerve of him to compare his self induced struggle, because it's very self induced, okay? Who he chooses to sleep with, male, female, or trans is his business. This is not a struggle for the entire black community. So for him to try and compare his self induced struggles to that of what Malcolm Malcolm X did for the people, what Gandhi did for his people, uh, Marcus Garvey, um, Nelson Mandela, what he did for his people. Like, sir, I'm going to need you to, you know, get, get a nice bite of humble pie. You cannot compare your self-induced struggle to the struggles that these men faced and fought for the people. Like, I just, I was just, I wasn't feeling that at all. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired of this whole poor me speech and, you know, I, I'm being persecuted. No one told you to say shit. You decided, like you stated at the beginning of the interview, you said that you did all of this looking for attention. And um, I was trying to get some attention. He admitted out his mouth. He did it for attention. He wanted to bring attention to trans issues and trans rights. So when you put yourself out there and you're admitting to sleeping with trans people who are pre-op, people are going to talk and chatter. This is social media. That's what folks do, bitch. Where have you been? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys the next clip of him being 100% triggered and literally pulling an R. Kelly. Okay. Not only when he stormed out of Gail King's interview, but he did this prior. I'm a few years back as well i have a video Everybody. question for you from a well, fan if no you video questions for me because this interview is over okay well mr k right. I, thank you very right. much for coming to our press i've not answered you. answering thank my you. questions thank but, you so much but thank so you beautiful. for being thank here you, so I, much. Thank you, you don't have to qu right. comment on my appearance right. sir so we all know r kelly for doing stuff like this because again it's a diversionary tactic and it looks like malik yoba is doing the same thing so y'all go ahead and check this out you don't look so good I don't think I could ever, or anybody who's cisgender could ever um, place themselves in a trans person's position. I think we can because I had to do it on New York Undercover. So on New York Undercover, we did an episode where people were um, killing transgender people. So we actually had to dress and go into the world. That's and fiction, say, though. That's not real. No, life. but you're missing my point. You're making your point. The point that I'm making is that you ask me, what does it feel like to stand up in the face of this? And I'm telling you that if I'm this and someone's calling me this, that is akin to a transgender woman being called a man. Do you really that, that, make that comparison? 
I do, you may not make it, but I'm making the comparison because I sat in it. I know what it's like for people to try to yell at me and tell me I'm gay, to tell me that I'm a pedophile, to tell me what I'm not. And I have to stand up for, to that. And the only thing that I can do is stand up with the truth. And so when you feel that pain, when you walk down the street and people are basically saying, fuck you, and you still move on your purpose, that's empowering. As I did how we would approach this. And, and we we're said actually recording, that we're recording, and the more you talk, the better, the worse it looks for you. So what I'm asking you, is that we, we're having a what conversation. What did you say? I said the more that we're talking, the more I'm just concerned. So I'm generally what did you concerned. Just say? I said that the more that it looks bad for you. That's really? what I'm saying. Yes, sir. This looks bad for me. Yes, because Check I'm, I'm asking out. a number no, no, of no. questions. We're done, bro. Okay. We're done. It looks bad for me because I chose to come here and speak to you about what you do and what I've done. It looks bad for me. It's a setup. I don't like this. Okay. We said that we were going to focus on policy. And we, we did, and we also, and we, and we also, and we also said, and we, and we, and said, on and we, we, at, and we also said, this at all. and no, we had a conversation no, 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 about no, a white man. I don't, we're just not, we fucking discussed for four fucking hours. You want to say allegations, homie? Okay, the fuck is wrong with you? It's starting to just. The fuck is wrong with you? There we, are, we sat for four fucking hours. We sat for four fucking hours. We sat for four fucking hours. We did sit for hours. We sat for four fucking hours. And you gonna stand some fucking allegations? Fuck you! The fuck is wrong with you? This is my fucking life! The fuck is wrong with you? Yo. Can you guys not? This is like. That's fucked up, man! We have like. The fuck is wrong with you, man? We fucking sat for four hours! All right, all right, bro. Don't tell me shit! Don't tell me about This isn't professional. This is life! Uh, his intention is not to antagonize you. We're trying to. No, we discussed a process. We said we would start. No, no. We can talk about it. Let's bring it. No, my man. Just so we had an office sitting, nobody's here to argue with you. Express no, no, no. Yourself, but let's keep it professional. Listen. You're not the one being he's called names brother, in the street. But he's not trying to call you. We're not. We discussed how we would flow. We said we would start with policy. We said we would talk about community. And then we said we would talk about our personal lives. We said we'd do 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes. You stayed on the allegations, B. I want the cards. You can't use any okay. of it. There's no release to signs. I want the fucking cards out of all these cameras. We can't we give can't you use our it cards. You're giving life to a lie, homie. Honey. All right, so you guys just watched that clip. So, and you see he's still upset and he's saying, you know, you don't know what it's like for people to tell you that I'm gay and that I'm a pedophile. So once again, he's still trying to distinguish himself and, you know, he's really not embracing the whole LGBT thing because, again, why would he be offended about people calling him gay when he's clearly admitting that he's still sleeping with, you know, pre-op transsexual women? That's what people are going to think. They're going to think you're either gay or in the very least bisexual. So the fact that that still bothers him lets me know he's... He's not an advocate of the LGBTQ. All he is is an agent of chaos. You know, so this entire situation is just crazy. I love how the interviewer grabbed his damn teacup, honey, and was sipping slow because that's some shit I would have did, okay? While you throwing tantrums, getting in your feelings, and getting upset, I'm going to just sit here and sip slow and have you look ridiculous in front of the world. You know, and then the fact that he just broke down and was cussing and was like, we spoke for four fucking hours, four fucking hours, and it's like, Okay, bruh, even if y'all spoke for four hours, they still have to ask you poignant questions. And that's not how you do it. That's not how you respond. And the fact that he's so mad and he's so upset, it makes him look guilty. So now on top of that, um, The Root spoke to Mariah um, Lopez and also another trans worker. So they did a phone interview. Um, and this is what Lopez, this is what Mariah Lopez is claiming. Lopez claims that she first had sex with Malik Yoba and it took place in 1998 in the West Village 
village or the meatpacking district. Lopez also noted that Malik wanted to engage in the sex acts without protection. She further recounts that she normally charged a bill or $100 for the act, but Malik Yoba only had $80 at the time of the encounter. During the second meeting, Lopez said that Yoba parked in the Greenwich Village area where she was working, turned off his lights, and stared at her which she says is a common way for the clients to pick up a sex worker. Lopez walked by the car and he told her to get in. She said, when I got in the car, he recognized who I was. I was slightly annoyed because I'm not necessarily a good hoe, one who would let him dictate the terms of the encounter unchallenged. Yoba insisted on picking the route of the location where the act would take place, Lopez said. Sometimes you go into a car and you direct the client where to go. She said not only was he a veteran-ass trick, so it was not surprising that he wanted to choose the route. Also, just being a celebrity, you let them drive always. And he had a very specific route, a circle of comfort, a zone. Lopez said they ended up in the Hell's Kitchen neighborhood park where they engaged in sexual act for pay. Yoba tried not to use protection, but Lopez was able to convince him otherwise, she says. Then they go on to say another black trans woman named Janessa Bussey who also performed sex work with Lopez during the late 90s and early 2000s, told The Root in a separate phone interview on Saturday that Lopez told her that she performed sex acts with Yoba for pay, and after the first act took place, Bussy confirmed Lopez was 13 years old at the time. On two occasions, Bussy, who says she went by the name Chrissy, during her sex time as a during her time as a sex worker said yoba gave her money in exchange for sex he also asked if she could find him teenage girls for sex bussy claimed bussy 40 said that there's no doubt that lopez looked underage at the time at the first alleged sex acts with yoba took place she looked 10 bussy added a representative for yoba said in a statement to the root that, that the actor categorically denies all accusations and would not respond beyond this comment or request for comment. So that is what's being stated now by The Root. Um, so like I always say, where there's smoke, there's fire, and more trans people are coming out, basically co-signing Mariah's story that, you know, Malik Yoba definitely has an attraction to teenage trans women. So this entire situation is crazy, but him storming off, cussing, and doing all that was just not a good look, and it makes him look even worse. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation. Once again, concerning Malik, Mind Games, Yoda, Yoba, honey, okay? Going off and carrying on once his feet is being held to the fire about the accusations from Mariah Lopez. Do you feel like, you know, Malik Yoba is telling the truth? Do you feel like he's only upset because he's guilty? And then how do you feel about the other trans woman coming out and basically co-signing everything that Mariah Lopez had been putting out there? So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be a part of the notification squad. So go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. All right, deuces.